Welcome to the Stress-Free Dentist Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Block. As always, I want to inspire, entertain, and educate you on the best tools and technologies out there. My goal is to help make your practice and career more profitable, efficient, and most importantly, more enjoyable. And check out all of my nonfiction and children's books on Amazon. And check out the stressfreedentist.com for any upcoming events. And if you're feeling you're a dental professional that's burnt out, or you just feel stuck or want to get to that next level, visit the International Academy of Dental Life Coaches or www.iadlc.com and we'll get you matched up with a life coach that understands dentistry. I also wanted to thank our amazing sponsor, Equa Marketing. They have helped me and my practice over the years to improve with SEO and website performance. And to find out how you can make your practice dominate in your area, Go to www.equa.com slash MSMSFD to book your complimentary meeting. Again, that's www.ekwa.com slash MSMSFD. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. And today I am joined by a recurring guest, the CEO of Equa Marketing, Narain Alru Raja. And today we're going to be talking about what NAP is and why it is so important. Naren, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much uh, for having me. This is uh, going to be a wonderful conversation. I think NAP is really critical for the success of practices uh, because you get benefit in multiple ways. So I'm really looking forward to this. And it's NAP. Can you actually explain what NAP is? And when I say NAP, it's N-A-P. Yes, it's an acronym. And uh, I guess in the tech world, we live in acronyms, uh, I guess, what uh, the techies love to use. So NAP stands for name, address, phone number. So think of it like a unique set of three things that identify a business. A business has a name, a business has an address, and a business has a phone number. The key is they have to be exact. So, you know, some people include their personal name in the practice name. It doesn't matter how you write it. However you do it, it has to be exact. Exact to the point of, you know, you know, the way you write the word road, for example, it has to be exact. Is it RD, RD dot, or ROAD? So however you write your name, address, and phone number, they have to be exact. If they are not, the internet uh, bots, uh, the bots that are, going around the internet and trying to figure things out will get confused. When they get confused, it creates problems. Instead of you getting the maximum benefit, you you kind of um, will not doing, do really well you know, in the World Wide Web. So it's all about having name, address, and phone number and having it consistently. So that's what the game is all about. So for example, my office is 179 Great Road, and it's spelled... It could be spelled R O A D or R D or our suite number is suite number two zero four, and that could be unit number two o four or suite could be spelled just S T E or fully spelled out. So, are you talking about those little differences? Hundred percent. So even like uh, some people put the number sign. So it doesn't matter what you do or how you write your name or how you write your address, it has to be exact. So the key is once you figure out how to write your name and address precisely, then you have to make sure everywhere on the internet, over time, that exact name, the exact address and phone number are used. So it's really all about like just scouring the internet and finding these issues and fixing them. And because the internet doesn't have a single boss, so to speak, you know, there are hundreds of sites, you know, that where your name, address and phone number are listed, Sometimes it's like uh, catch and you know cat and mouse. Like you're kind of taking two steps forward, and then something goes wrong. You go back and fix it. But the goal is, if anybody focuses on it, just like you know, let's say you want to build muscle, you focus on it and you train, and every single day, you're going to be in a better shape six months later than you were on day one. You're going to be in even a better, even better shape a year later. So as long as you keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, NAP can really, really, really help you over time. It'll help you with SEO. And it'll also help you because you will get direct traffic from all those different websites. Yeah, it makes sense. If if everything's consistent, then, or if it's not consistent, then that'll mess up SEO and Google. And But if everything is consistent, then you may end up 
uh, on one of the earlier pages of of Google. Is that is that really why NAP is so important? Is Google and SEO and Google search? Yeah, NAP is important because of SEO. And let's kind of get into that a little bit more in depth. So SEO is all about getting into the top 5% of websites that get 95% of the free traffic. Why is that the case? Because Google makes so much money from Google ads, literally like 200 plus billion dollars. So Google's it's in Google's interest to make sure you don't get free traffic. So they keep the amount of people who get free traffic as tiny as possible. So it's a top 5%. So the other 95%, you know, have to depend on Google ads or have to depend on PPO plans to get new new patients. So if you are in the top 5%, then I guess the question is, you know, what do you do? You know, how do you think about this? Uh, and, uh, you know, to get into the top 5%, it's like getting into a top university. Um, let's say you want to get into the best dental school. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy. You have to have a great GPA. You have to have great interviews your entrance exam, you should have aced it. Um, you know, the, the subjects you studied and, and the things you did in your undergrad, they are going to look at that. So in all the things that the university is looking at in deciding whether to let you in or not, you have to do really well. Now, universities are not free. It's like half a million dollars. So, you know, to some degree, I would argue that getting into a top university is easier. With Google, it's tricky because Google gives it for free. So they keep changing their rules every day. Just because you got in yesterday and you were doing really well yesterday doesn't mean you're going to do well today. So the way to think about it, you know, as a dental practice owner is you don't need to kind of do a PhD in dentistry. There are six things Google cares about. One of those is NAP. You just have to get an A in NAP, just like you have to get an A in the other 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 five, five areas. If you do that, and again, uh, let me define um, A you have to be better than your competition. So let's say you have a thousand dentists in your neighborhood or 500 or even a hundred, you have to do better than all of those guys when it comes to NAP. So if you work on it day in and day out and you just focus on it and you have a dedicated team focusing on it, fixing these issues, cleaning them up day in and day out, your NAP score will go up and up and up. And as long as you are getting the highest score compared to everybody else, because you have more profiles being managed, more profiles with clean NAP information, you're going to do great. And how do you know you're doing great? You will rank for 100 or more keywords because remember 5% get 95% of the benefit. And typically once you are ranking for 100 or more keywords, you are in the top 5%. Now, why SEO? Because SEO costs a fraction of Google ads, costs pennies compared to PPO. So, so NAP is really, really important if you want to be in the top 5% of SEO. And what about if we're talking about outside of SEO? How does NAP benefit us? Yeah, the way to think about it is like, you know, like I'm a huge Apple fan. So I buy Apple products. Most of the time I'll go to an Apple store and I'll pick it up. Sometimes I buy it online. Sometimes I am at a, you know, Best Buy and I see something I like. I want it to always buy, but I just haven't had the time to go to an Apple store. I'll pick it up there, right? So think of NAP websites like those Best Buy kiosks, the Apple kiosks, meaning they are not your primary store. Your primary store is your website, uh, your Google My Business page. But there are, you know, fifty other kind of entry points into your practice. Why? Because they have your business name, they have your website, they have your office hours, they have your phone number. So each one of those dozens and dozens of NAP websites can drive traffic to you. So that's the way I would think about it. You know, I would think about it in terms of, you know, um, um, you know, like. Like imagine there is a website called Yelp, right? We all know Yelp or City Search. I know many of us don't like Yelp, but there are hundreds of those kind of websites. So City Search could drive traffic to you. There could be somebody who goes to your City Search page and pick up the phone and call your office. Now, each one only might give you two phone calls, for example, on average. But when you have 25 of them, that is like 50 phone calls. So it adds up. So NAP helps in two ways. One, it is a core part of Google's algorithm for SEO. The other benefit is you're going to get direct phone visitors, direct phone calls from those websites. And what are some of the challenges with NAP? Yeah, I think the challenges with NAP is just, um, it's a mindset thing where it's it's not like one and done. It's not like, oh, you get into that dental school once and you're set for life. That's not what it is. Rather, it'll keep, you have to keep at it because just because your NAP was great two weeks ago, if you completely ignore it for the next two weeks, your NAP will your NAP scores and your NAP rankings will go down. Why? Because 
these sites, like I was alluding to earlier, are not controlled by you. You're not paying them any money. So they're not responsible for making sure your information is accurate and correct. So they might make an update to their database and all of a sudden the correct information you had is wiped out. Or there is a duplicate listing because a lot of these websites are driven by AI. So let's say they see your name spelled slightly differently. Facebook does this a lot. And all of a sudden they'll create a second profile for you thinking those are two different practices. And now some people will write reviews on one practice, one, one Facebook page, the other ones will write review on the other Facebook page. Now you have duplicate listings fighting with each other. That causes enough confusion. And also you, because customers are confused, which one is real, which one is not. Um, so, and if you have reviews, it's going to get split. So instead of you having like a hundred reviews, you might have 30 in one and 70 in the other, right? So all kinds of issues. So you need to keep at it. You need to constantly monitor these things and stay on top of it. Anytime there are problems, go and fix it. So the way I think about it is like, you know, SEO is like an ocean and yeah, let's say there is a team, you know, looking for salmon there's a team looking for shark, you know, different, different kinds of things. The same way. This team is fo focused on NAP. They're finding the NAP issues. They're fixing the issues. And they just do that, just that one task of like taking care of your NAP. And you can't use automation. Um, I know people used to do automation a while ago, but the problem is those can't fix the problems. Let's say you have two duplicate listings. Somebody has to, you know, claim the second profile, you know, and for that they will send a code. And then somebody has to merge the profiles. Again, you have to follow certain procedures. And every site is different. The way Yelp works is different from the way Facebook works. So you have to kind of um, have experts who know what they're doing, but the key is they have to focus on it. And then you as the business owner has to track it. So with our clients, like with you, Eric, for example, you get a monthly report and we share like, how is your nap status evolving and changing you know, over time? So that way your nap is better today than it was six months ago or three months ago. So this isn't like a do it once, set it, forget it type of thing. You do no. once, but you got to constantly be on this. 100%. This is something that you have to stay on top of. And how do you do a lot of this? Is it through Google My Business, checking out our profiles on Google My Business? Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Google My Business. Um, so SEO, really, there are two ways you get traffic from what we call SEO. One is... Uh, as part of the map. So you show up on the map, right? So I'm looking for dentists near me or veneers near me and your practice shows up on the map. That is called Google My Business, right? Where you have your own profile on Google and um, it's your name is listed, your phone number is listed, your address is listed and people can call your office. Um, so that's you know what the Google My Business is. So if you do SEO right, meaning you do NAP and all the other things of SEO right, you are gonna show up both on the maps, which is Google My Business, as well as below the maps, which is what we call regular SEO. Now, Google My Business can be massive. Like for you, for example, more than 100 people call your office just from Google My Business every month. You know, you get thousands of people seeing your Google My Business profile. So. So uh, think of Google My Business as a NAP site, but a very, very, very important NAP site. You know, you know what I mean? So you have to do extra things on top of it because it's going to drive 30 times more you know, business for you compared to City Search or Yelp or one of those other places. So if it's going to give you 30 times the results, you need to focus on it. So we, on your behalf, focus on it. So what do you do? You have to, again, make sure the information is correct, up to date. And Google has lots of standards on how to upload pictures and what to say and what not to say. Um, even like the reviews, right? Try to get 10 reviews a month. Of course, we can't help you like as a marketing company because we don't know who your happy patients are, but you can you know, tap into your happy patients and get 10 reviews a month. Now, one of the things that we do as a marketing company is reply to those reviews. So when somebody writes a review, you need to reply to it within 24 to 48 hours. Why? Because these are all best practices that will increase the chance of you showing up on Google My Business more and more and more and get a lot of exposure and traffic through that. Um, so you have to actively manage Google My Business. And it is really important because how powerful it is. Like I would say, and you know, if you're getting 100 people, 30 people will come from Google My Business, 70 will from regular SEO, or uh, could be 60, 40 or 40, 60. But anyway, so it's really important you put extra attention to it. And again, you need to have experts who know what they're doing, who are on top of this day in and day out, week in and week out, just to kind of keep things um, going well. And, and just like, Facebook could create a duplicate listing, so can Google. So when that happens, again, it'll, it'll take weeks and months. You have to like work on it, merge it. Another issue that we deal with all the time is negative reviews. Like sometimes it's a fake review, it's not a real review. And if it violates Google standards, we can get, get it removed. 
So these are all the things you need to do when, when it comes to Google My Business. Now, how might my dentist doing out there? You know, they they get a website, they got a, a domain, they got a Facebook page. They're maybe doing some blogs, some videos, some marketing. What, what are you seeing out there? How are dentists faring with, with NAP? We do um, what we call a marketing strategy meeting. So that's something that we offer. It's a $900 value. And the purpose of the marketing strategy meeting is to help a dentist figure out how well they're doing with marketing. So obviously, like I said, you know, we look at lots of things. Uh, SEO is a huge part. And there are six things and NAP is one of them. So we, in this marketing strategy meeting, prior to the meeting, we will study your NAP, figure out how well you are doing, and then give you a report card. Are you crushing it? Or there are NAP issues. Even, you know, like most of the time, 85% of the time, just between their own website and their own Google My Business page and Facebook page, there are issues. So forget about dozens of websites with no issues, just the top three have issues. So obviously, you know, that's where you start. You figure out what are the most important things and you start fixing them. So when we do the marketing strategy meeting, like, like I was saying, you know, 85% of them have issues. And one of the things we recommend is like a roadmap, like, okay, where given where we are today, based on your current reality, what should the world look like a year from now? So we give you a plan uh, again, for the entire marketing, but definitely NAP as part of that. Um, and I think um, that's really, really important. If anyone is interested in booking that marketing strategy meeting, the link is equa.com slash MSMSFT. That is EKWA.com slash MSMSFT. That's our gift to you. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much. Again, Narain Arul Raja, the CEO of Equa Marketing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Eric. Really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks again for listening to the Stress-Free Dentist podcast. And don't hesitate to get in touch with me at info at the .com. And if you haven't already, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Until the next episode, I'm Dr. Eric Block, the Stress-Free Dentist.